Hello and welcome to today's Wild Hearthstone deck tech and gameplay video on what I'm calling Pud's Gang. Basically, Pud's Gang is a combination of two archetypes, with Kingpin Pud and his Ogre Gang being one of the packages that... And the other package would be... Oh, what's Where's the, the card's name? Potion Master, Putricide, and a lot of the potion cards... He says the... There we go. A lot of the potion cards. Since neither um, package of cards, in my experience, had enough cards to like really form a unique deck identity, and the uh, Kingpin Pud and all his cards coming out, I knew I really wanted to do something with this after I saw a Raren uh, do a version, I think, in one of these standard um, like preview things. So, this is a... Uh, sort of inspired by him to give him credit where it's due. Now, besides our ogres and all of our potion boys, we have a couple of just general glue cards, like your mic drops, and what's arguably just as important as the two respective packages of cards are a load of extra ways to get extra copies of the puds, because really, the deck works best when you can just play, like, 10, 20 copies of PUD over and over and over and over again and just have such like consistent threats and apply so much pressure and have a really like dangerous board that you eventually just drown your opponent. So we use cards like Lab Recruiter, Tog Waggle Scheme, and Breakdance to build those like mini recursive layers. And the another perk of all of these cards that give you extra copies of what would be Kingpin Pud. If you need to, say, get an extra Potion Master or something, or, you know, any other card, you can also get extra copies of those if the, you know, Ogre plan isn't working. And that is the basic long-winded version of the deck. With that out of the way, we'll go on to game number one. But before we do that, don't forget to like the video if you like it, subscribe if you like my grab bag of content and would like to see more in the future. And if you have any sort of questions, like, I don't have X, what about Y? Uh, this deck is pretty... It's, eh, it is both friendly and not friendly, so... Eh, you'll, <laughs> your mileage will vary. Now, on to game number one. And game number one with our little Puds Gang Rogue. Uh, for the most part, in my experience, you just want things to do early on. The mic drop's a little unnecessary, so that'll be thrown back. And before anybody asks, why are the swordfish in here when you have no pirates? It's just a way to sort of sift through draws. Which is, like, more useful than you think, since while you can get lots of card draw off of your potions, you, of course, by the sheer RNG nature of them, you can't guarantee it. Anywho, on to the game proper. And well, uh, uh what? That... Uh, does Warlock have a mill deck? And I, I don't, I don't think so. Oh well, uh, we'll go ahead and potion belt then. Um, sure, dreadful's fine. And maybe, yeah, we'll just get double dreadful. Why not? It is a uh, while I like I was talking about before. While it is somewhat difficult to control, you know, what your potions can be. And to their defense, there's a pretty small band of what's possible, so you can f get loosely what you want at any given point in time. That being said, we'll just get rid of the board. Yeah, I think they're gonna. I say they get a copy of the potion from the Elic, but we actually kind of don't mind, since our goal is to again play many recursive layers and ugh, recursive might not, might be the right might not be the right word. The, but yeah, we just want to play loads and loads of ogres over and over again, to where you know you can, for the most part, outrun most people's sweepers and all the removal once you get to you know like 10, 15, 20 copies of Kingpin Pud. In the meantime, just gonna play our ogre gang and just apply what pressure you can with them. Next turn, we'll play the ogre gang ace. Go ahead and trade that in. Either way, we're okay with the outcome. And yeah, just keep hitting. Now, it does also sort of piggybacking on the... Um, okay, what is our opponent doing? 
Oh, that's fine. Oh, what's all characters? Okay. Uh, but piggybacking on the point earlier, speaking about the inherent RNG kind of nature of uh, the potions, the ogres are much the same thing, so you do have to be mindful. Now, it's still really fun, and sometimes some RNG is a, a fun and a good thing. It's just, you know, if you don't like RNG, you're going to have a bad time. <laughs> now, in the meantime, we'll just go ahead and ogre gang. Probably play a swordfish. Thank God, Pud was on the bottom. <laughs> Uh, we'll go ahead and keep the weapon. It's fine. Uh, if nothing else... Lifesteal of the... Uh, that's fine. I mean... Okay, that's fine. I don't think we care, right? Um, yeah, we'll go ahead and play a pud. Why not? Then we will... Go ahead and coin out a lab recruiter to get extra copies of the pud. As well as shadow step back the original. Since the wind fury gained by the pud remains on the creatures themselves, it's basically free. Um. Yeah. We'll go ahead and attack, see what happens here. We'd love to get divine shield. Eh, okay, that's fine. And honestly, we kind of don't mind the card draw. I think we can start, start start chipping away at our opponent here. I don't think they're going to be able to answer our many, many puds we're going to end up getting. And you can be kind of cavalier with uh, what you decide to do with each individual pud. Since you're just going to have so many of them on average. Like, our opponent's doing control things, and unless they have like a combo kill, this deck like does really well against slow matchups. We're going to go ahead and get rid of the curse... Play the cheaper pud. I am gonna. Let's see, we're gonna throw the lab recruiter into the spice. And then we're gonna do the other new er, lab recruiter on the pud, getting more copies, and again, sending that bad boy back to hand. <laughs> I'm so glad this has worked. I, I think we got this win since our opponent is. A slower deck, and this deck does great against slow decks and a slow meta. So I think we have this. But even if we don't, at, at this point alone, we have <laughs> done a fantastic job of showing what this deck wants to do. I really hope that uh, in the mini set that eventually comes out, we will get like another like Ogre Gang card. Because if we will, I will a thousand percent update this list. And notice they spent their whole turn just removing my board, and I can just play another one. Go ahead, attack. And either it attacks, or we just, you know, as you can see, dear <laughs> god, just hit with a 14 weapon. Oh, that's so fucking great. And we just bonk him in the head. <laughs> I love this deck so much. Oh, it might not be good, but I kind of don't care. Um, I'm actually going to do the Potion Master here. And then we'll get a Swordfish. Uh, yeah, I think, well, yeah, we'll just get another pud. That's fine. We're in a good enough spot. I don't think we need to be, like, cute. We might, I wouldn't be surprised if they have some sort of sweeper, but let's make them make that choice. Since if they don't have it here, they, they just, well, they don't guarantee die, but they basically just die. That'll do it. I guess the question is, do I... Hang on. Now we need to need to be responsible. Okay. Card draws nice. We're gonna hit this time. There we go. And I think I largely just ignore it. Go face with everything. I think we can afford to play one of our puds, and then we'll go ahead and send it back to our hand with a break dance, allowing us to even retain. You know, the, the bodies of said pud. <laughs> this is fantastic. Um, I don't need to, like, draw. Well, sure, we'll do the finale. Or we'll do the mic drop one without a finale. That's fine. I'm not gonna do the potion belt. I might as well just save it until we need it. <laughs> this deck is awesome. Yeah. Do your, your, <laughs> your like 
cool, fancy combo stuff when I just hit you in the head with ogres. That's fantastic. Yeah, that's that's a card. Oh no, whatever will I do? Do I just win anyway? Yeah, it's about to say, I think I just win. That's how we do it, baby! <laughs> this is a fantastic deck, man. I love this. This deck has been one of the ones I've had the most amount of fun with in like a very long time of Hearthstone. And I'm super glad that this first game did a fantastic job of showing off the deck. Anywho, on to game number two. And game number two with our little Puds Gang Rogue. And this is a perfectly fine opening hand. We have a curve. Can't really ask for much more than that. I will take this moment in the early turns of the game to warn you all that I know normally I try to make it where uh, any given uh, Hearthstone video will have like three games in it. But I just, not to like, you know, pierce the fourth wall too much. I just don't have that kind of time today. So, if there's only two games, I do apologize. It's just, you know, life isn't giving me, like, a whole lot of ends today to, like, really make some stuff happen. Now, anywho, our opponent, uh, you know, Death Rattle Triggers, that's fine. They some Elwyn Boar thing. Automaton's weird. That doesn't seem to make a whole lot of sense with that, but sure, I guess. Um, yeah, we'll do the Potion Master. Why not? Just go ahead, apply some pressure. See what happens. Hi, sweetheart. Have you chosen to come hang out with the dad? Okay. Let me, let me finagle myself into a position where you can come hang out with me. Yeah. Oh, that baby. Um, I think our turn will be just uh, playing an ogre gang and attacking as soon as the cat gets off the mouse. Yeah. Go ahead and see if the Ogre Gang will hit correctly. And if it doesn't, we can just trade. Isn't that right? Yeah, we can just trade. You want to come lie down? You know, we're just looking for uh, a cuddle and a kiss and leave. That's cool. Dad just enjoys hanging out with you. Opponent's doing a whole lot for having not played a single Death Rattle. Kind of has to be said. Oh, nope, you're back. Yeah, come on. Come on, baby. Okay. Uh, okay, we can take that. I apologize for the sound, but there's a cat. She's very cute, and I love her very much. Uh, we'll do a ghoulish alchemist. I think we'll do the potion belt now, so we can see what we have our hands on. Maybe a double dreadful would be nice. Or not double dreadful, but... Yeah, okay, so I got what I needed. It's not what I was expecting. Or, you know, words. Uh, we'll do this. Just draw and play some dudes. Oh, I know. You're so cute. Why don't you come lay down in the lap? And be a lap cat. And not like another living, breathing uh, pop filter. You never mind. Okay, what are they doing? Shuffle a copy of this in your deck with a permanent 3 3. That's cool. Uh, I think we'll go ahead and just play an Oak Gang. See if it'll. Oh, do I want that to hit? Yeah, that's fine. We'll go ahead and see if it hits. Got both and everything. Hell yeah. And I guess with the rest, we just go face. If nothing else, this is actually doing a good job of showing that even if by some miracle you don't happen to get, like, all of the uh, required Puds Gang pieces. Come on, honey. That you can just run them down with, like, general creatures early on. And, like, the potion package, like, isn't bad. The only reason why I didn't make a potion deck, like, our potion rogue before, is that I didn't personally think there was, like, enough cards to make the archetype work, if that makes sense. Uh... Yeah. Just play an ogre gang. See if the hit connects. And we'll trade there. And just have an absolute army of, like, actually pretty good potions. Eh, yeah, maybe dagger up again. And yeah. Our opponent is a weird deck. They, they, they have not played nearly enough death rattles to justify this. And it could be that they're just drawing, like, horrendously bad. Very possible. 
Okay. Our opponents are making more progress. I think we're just going to shoot their face and destroy their only blocker. I don't think they'll kill him, right? Well, hold on. Let me let me let me do some math here. Plan remains the same. 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 12. Okay, that is lethal. Never mind. Okay. But this is good. We can just show the deck, you know, winning via potions and all of the early game pressure and tools that it can provide the deck. So we'll take that. Hell yeah! Um, yeah, yeah. I the, the reason why I had to pause there is that I want to do a third game, but I know I'm not going to have enough time. And if I did, it would be rushed. And I, yeah, I do again. I do apologize that this game is not, or this video isn't going to have three games like it normally would. Just again, IRL stuff is really like limiting my free time right now. I do really apologize. But I think both of these games did a good job of showing, you know, kind of what the deck wants to do. I would a thousand percent recommend this deck if you are like me and, and love, like, a pretty interesting list. This is actually, like, you know, pretty interesting in that, like, it can, you know, it combines two packages of cards that probably were never meant to be combined by R&D and actually, like, you know, glues them together into, like, a pretty fun and actually pretty good list. You know, RNG dependent and all that, which does have to be said. Anywho, thank you all for watching. Don't forget to like the video if you like it. Subscribe if you like my grab bag of content and would like to see more in the future. And if you have any sort of questions that are nice or, you know, like, I don't have X, what about Y? As long as it's somewhat, you know, positive, I'll do what I can to respond to each comment I see. Thank you all. Have a nice day and stay warm out there if you're in old uh, the Northern Hemisphere because it's getting chilly outside. Bye-bye.